what are the three classes of antipsychotics? You know, you have first generation and second generation, but that first generation is also broken down into high potency and low potency. So that's how you get the three. What are some of the high potency first generation ones? Halipuridol and chlorpromazine. What's the side effects that's common with the high potency ones? EPS. And then the low potency ones, what's common for the low potency first generation? Anticholinergic effects or ham block. What's the ham block? That's antihistamine, anti alpha 1 blockade, and anti muscarinic. What are the second generations? Those are the atypical antipsychotics. What are some examples of those? Well, you got your clozapine, quetanapine, risperidone, and also olanzapine. What are the side effects of these? Yes, metabolic syndrome. So it can cause obesity. So the second generation, you want to associate that with metabolic syndrome. And then with metabolic syndrome, you're going to see hyperlipidemia, hyperglycemia, and obesity. So what will you check on this patient? You'll check their BMI, their blood pressure, A1C, and lipids. What's the biggest drug for metabolic syndrome on your test? Olanzapine for obesity. What about the first generation antipsychotic, thyroidazine? What's its big adverse effect? Retinal pigmentation. What about chlorpromazine? What's it famous for? Corneal deposits. Oh, don't get confused with those schizoaffective disorder. You know, is it at its baseline? Is it schizophrenia? Is it depression? What is it? It's a major depression with psychotic features. So schizoaffective is someone who's baseline schizophrenic plus a depressive episode or they can have manic episodes, which is where the affective word comes into play. So schizo plus affective. So this patient isn't depressed nor manic, but they still hear voices. What will you select? Schizoaffective. But if it's a major depression with psychotic features, once they're in a depressive episode and when the voices go away, they feel good. What do you treat schizoaffective with? Second generation antipsychotics are mood stabilizers like lithium as first choice, but you can also use valporate or carpanzapine as a mood stabilizer. For antipsychotic action, what are the four neurotransmitter pathways? There's mesolimbic, mesocortical, substantia nigh, and tubular infundibular antipsychotics. Block what? They block dopamine, and they work on all four of these tracks. So remember, when mesocortical is responsible for negative symptoms, such as cognitive deficits and social withdrawal, Mesolimbic is responsible for positive symptoms of schizophrenia, such as hallucinations and delusions. And the tuberoinfundibular, that's the dopamine prolactin pathway. So remember, dopamine blocks the release of prolactin, so it suppresses prolactin release. So if you give an antipsychotic, you block dopamine. So now that blocking mechanism is removed. So now you have prolactin free to secrete. And then that's when it leads to what? hypoprolactemia, and then what? Gynecomastia. There's an antipsychotic that's famous for doing this side effect. What drug is that? Risperidone. Parkinson's substantia ni, which is, remember, where your dopamine neurons help control your basal ganglia for your normal movement. So basically, if you block that, then you can have Parkinsonium. So this is also really important to its knowing if it's going to be a good prognosis versus a poor prognosis with schizophrenia. So let's play a game, uh, good versus bad prognosis in schizophrenia. I'll say something and then you tell me, is it a good prognosis or a bad? Okay. So late onset is good prognosis. Early onset is bad prognosis. If the patient is male, poor prognosis. Uh, female, you know, next slow onset is usually a bad prognosis. So in review, the best prognosis is a female, sudden and late onset. Worst prognosis is male, slow to come, early onset. What are the timeline rate for brief psychotic disorders such as schizophreniform? 
compared to schizophrenia. If it's a brief psychotic disorder, less than one month, that's schizophreniform. If it's greater than six months, that's schizophrenia. What do you have to have with schizophrenia? Hallucinations, delusions, and disorganized speech or negative symptoms. How long does delusional disorders have to last? At least one month of delusions. Do they function normally in society? Yes, they do. What's better, having a better prognosis schizoaffective disorder or schizophreniform? Schizoaffective has more mood symptoms versus schizophreniform is a pure psychosis, thus worse prognosis. What has a better prognosis like major depression or schizoaffective? Major depression. Remember, the best prognosis is with mood disorders and worse is psychotic disorders. Which has a better prognosis, schizoaffective or schizophreniform? Schizoaffective. You know, don't forget, moody stuff have a better prognosis over psychotic stuff. Oh, yes, I definitely know your ciggy caps for depression, but don't forget the mood. And five of these means depression. What's the other mnemonic? Dig fast for bipolar two. Distracted, insomnia, grandiosity, flight of ideas, activity, pressured, speech, and thoughtfulness. Three of these are needed to qualify for bipolar. How do you know the difference between mania and hypomania? Mania is a type 1 and requires hospitalization. Hypomania does not. What is the timing of mania? They have at least one week of symptoms plus social dysfunction and three plus dig fast. What about the timing for hypomania? It's at least three dig fast for four days in a row, but they don't require hospitalization. What are the adverse effects of tricyclic antidepressants? Hmm, TCA side effects, that's that hand block. Plus, the tri-C is decor, cardiac convulsions, and coma. What type of cardiac things occur? QTC prolongation and arrhythmias. Ooh, serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome, that can occur when the patient is started on an SSRI and then they, then they continue it. it. Is started on a different class of antidepressant like an MAOI too quickly. What is the average washout period for an SSRI? Like a week. How long does it take for an antidepressant to start working? Ah, four to six weeks. What if a patient has been taking an SSRI, it's worked for them for a few months, and now wants to stop taking it? They should take it for at least six to nine months. What if they're taking an SSRI, it's working, but they have side effects? Switch to a different SSRI. What if it's not working at all? Switch classes. What is electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, used for? For emergencies when rapid changes are needed. What are the rapid changes that are needed? Well, there's two. Patient has not eaten in days or high concern for self-demise. What are the side effects of ECT? Amnesia for around six months. What is it called when you hold your arm out and it stays like that? Catatonia and cataplexia. Cataplexia is a type of catatonia. What are you going to use? Benzodiazepines, but specifically what? Lorazepam. Okay, pregnancy. What distinguishes peripartum blues from peripartum depression? In depression, the mom has the inability to enjoy their child, whereas peripartum blues is mild, so they're tearful and sad, but they still enjoy their baby. But someone who's depressed and has signs that they've lost interest in a child, that's the different thing. What's the difference between grief, like normal grief, versus major grief or major depressive disorder? The main thing is that the person who is grieving, like bereavement, they have good days and bad days. They have ups and downs, but the person who's depressed is down all the time. What's the mnemonic LMNOP? Lithium causes movement disorders, neurogenic, diabetes, insipidus, hypothyroidism, and pregnancy defects. What's the major cardiac problem? Epstein abnormally. It used to be thought to be associated with lithium use, but not anymore. It was associated with maternal mental health problems generally rather than lithium or benzodiazepine specifically. 
Therefore, changing or stopping medications may not be preventative. There's no statistical significant association that was found between malformations and the use of lithia. What is cyclothymic disorder? It's a mild depression and mild mania. How long does it have to last? Two years. What is a premenstrual dysphoria disorder? It is the medical term for PMS. What do you recommend them to do? Tell them to keep a menstrual diary and include mood swings. What's the first line of treatment for PMDD? SSRI. Your next patient comes in with an acute panic attack. What are you going to give them? How do you treat panic disorders with SSRI? What's the difference between a panic attack versus pheochromocytoma? The pheochromocytoma has anxiety and panic attacks, but you'll also see high blood pressure and high heart rate due to adrenal gland tumor versus that just of a simple panic attack. How do you diagnose a panic attack? A patient has at least one month of fear of getting another attack, and another key thing is that these attacks come out of the blue. What can precipitate a panic attack? A phobia. What triggers a phobia? A stimulus like a clown or a spider. What's the treatment for public speaking phobia? A beta blocker. Which one specifically? Propranolol. Can you give this to an asthmatic? No, you give them a benzo. Social anxiety disorder versus avoidant personality disorder. Social anxiety disorder is a fear of embarrassment in public. They don't like to go out in public. They only want to use a public restroom. They definitely don't want to speak in public because they don't want to get themselves into a situation where they'll be embarrassed. Avoidant personality disorder, they have fears of getting rejected or they feel like they're not good enough for people. Um, but they definitely do want to make friends. But again, that fear they're not good enough. So sometimes those, these can overlap to social anxiety disorder versus avoidant personality disorder because they both don't really like to go out. What the avoidant person secretly wants is to be friends, but they just don't think they're cool enough. But the social anxiety disorder person, it's actually like they don't want to be embarrassed at all in public. The key thing to remember here is that social anxiety disorder is that it revolves around public areas, whereas avoidant dis personality disorder, it can happen anywhere. It can be just like they're hanging out, chilling, and bam, it hits them. What's the first line of treatment? CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. What's the first line for OCD? It's a specific type of CPT. Do you know which one it is? Exposure response control. What's the type of therapy used for borderline personality disorder? DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy. I have a video also on dialectical, on DBT and one on CBT. Check it out on my page. How do you diagnose borderline personality disorder? Their mood swings shift quickly. They use defense mechanism called splitting. And they use extremes of languages to describe people such as they're terrible or they're amazing. And they have a history of, of SI behavior. What's an adjustment disorder? You know, it doesn't quite meet a depression sticky cap criteria as he can't count five of the nine. In this one, it's some sort of life event has occurred less than three months ago. At what age does conduct disorder become antisocial disorder? 16. Sweet 16. What's the difference between conduct disorder versus antisocial personality disorder? Conduct disorder is typically diagnosed in children or adolescents and may or may not progress to antisocial personality disorder in adulthood. Antisocial personality disorder is more persistent and ingrained condition diagnosed in adulthood, often after a history of what? Conduct disorder symptoms. What's the difference between conic disorder and oppositional defiant disorder? Both have an attitude problem, but the conduct person doesn't care about rules or laws. So if some, someone's just like fighting or burning things, think conduct disorder. Oppositional defiant is more of a kind of rebellious type of attitude, but they don't break the laws. What's the difference between OCD and OCPD? OCD is egodystonic, whereas OCPD is egosystonic. 
So the person with OCD hates that they have it, like they have these intrusive thoughts and they have to wash their hands all the time and it's really bothering them. Whereas the OCPD, they're perfectionists and they actually enjoy it. So OCPD is not bothered, but OCD is bothered. All right, switching things up. What kind of medication would you give alcohol use disorder person? Naltrexone and disulfiram. What's the mechanism of action of disulfiram? It's an acetaldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor. So it increases acetaldehyde, which induces nausea and vomiting. So it's very unpleasant, but you don't really give it to anyone anymore because all they have to do is just not take it. It's just so they can drink. If someone has taken a hallucinogen and they're intoxicated, what is it? And they're freaking out on top of it. What are you going to do for them? What are you going to treat them with? Which med? Benzo. Okay, you have a high schooler that pops in. The clinic has a perioral rash. He's been acting psychotic for the last hour. You go back and check on him in the ED about an hour later, and he's back to normal. What substance did he take? He took an inhalant. It's very, it acts very quickly because it has a very short half-life. What's another name for perioral dermatitis? Glue, sniffer, rash. What drug do you use for nicotine addiction treatment? A partial nicotine acetylcholide receptor agonist like Chantix. What's contraindicated in people with seizures and who have an eating disorder? Bupropion, because it lowers the seizure threshold. What are the two drugs that can be used for nicotine addiction? Nicotine replacement therapy. They come into a variety of forms like nicotine patch, gum, or lozenger. And the second drug is Chantix. What are three medications that most commonly cause delirium? Benzos, TCAs, and anticholinergics. If none of these three are in their medical list, check for infection. If someone seems to be delirious, they have dilated pupils and tachycardic, what would you do next? Talk screen, especially if you're young. If someone has a neurocognitive disorder, what do you have to rule out first? Well, first you want the reversible causes like B12 deficiency, thyroid problem, syphilis, normal pressure hydrocephalus. What's the first line treatment of normal pressure hydrocephalus? Lumbar puncture. What's the definitive treatment? Placement of a VP shunt. Someone has a neuroleptic malignant syndrome. What's the first line treatment? You are going to discontinue the neuroleptics and provide supportive care. What's the supportive care? Hydration, cooling, and monitoring for rhabdomyolysis, acute renal failure, and respiratory failure. Additionally, certain medications such as Tantrum or Parladel may be used in some cases to help manage symptoms, but their effectiveness can vary and they are not universally recommended as first-line treatments. How do you tell the difference between a neuroleptic malignant syndrome and serotonin syndrome? Serotonin syndrome has myoclonus, whereas those with neuroleptic malignant syndrome do not. They have a very similar picture. They both are febrile. They both have rigidity. So don't get the two confused though. Serotonin syndrome has myoclonus. Also look at the history of taking drugs for a depression disorder. Then it's serotonin syndrome. But if they are like having schizophrenia, then it's most likely going to be neuroleptic malignant syndrome. If you're stuck, look at the drugs that are in the vignette of the question before you answer. What type of antidepressant predisposes to a tyramine crisis? MEOIs like trimalcycloprine and phenylazine. If you have a thyramine crisis, how are you going to treat it? Basically, for a thyramine crisis, it's a hypertensive emergency, so you want to use hypertensive emergency drugs. Regardless of antipsychotics, don't forget about the extra pyramidal symptoms of e- like the EPS, and there are four of them you need to know. First is dystonia, second is akathasia, third is Parkinsonosium, and fourth is tardive dyskinesia. And you know you have to diagnose it and you have to treat it. So the first is dystonia. That happens like right away and it can happen within hours. And this is basically muscle spasms that do not relax. What part of the body is most likely going to spasm? The sternoclinomastoid muscle. So think torticollis of the neck will be seen. It will be contracted and will stay there. That's what's called dystonia. What is the treatment for EPS? 
It's easy as they all start with Bs. Diphenhedrine, Benadryl, Benzotropine to treat the dystonia. Akathasia is a more intense restlessness, and the antidote for that is what? More Bs, more Benzos, or a beta blocker for th- the third one is that Parkinsonosium. What are you going to treat that with? Benztropine. And then tardive dyskinesia, it's more like a chronic condition current later. That's that lip smacking, facial tics, and jerking limb movements. So when I think of this, I just kind of think of, remember that movie Dark Knight with the Joker? He exhibits all that. It's quite interesting when you see the movie now. What's the... So when I think of this, I just kind of think of, remember that movie Dark Knight with the Joker? He exhibits all that. It's quite interesting when you see the movie now. What's the antidote? Valbenazine. Or switch to clozapine. But its main side effect is... But its main side effect is agranulocytosis. What lab do you want to order? You're going to draw a periodic CBC. If it shows infection, now what do you do? You discontinue clozapine. Out of all the antipsychotic meds, which one of them will decrease the risk of S the most? Clozapine. What is a mood stable that is known to lower S risk the most? Lithium. How do you treat lithium toxicity? How do you treat lithium toxicity? You hydrate aggressively with IV fluids and hemodialysis might even need, be needed. Dialysis is an indicator for what? The mnemonic is AEIOU, acidosis, electrolytes, intoxicants, overload, and uremia. Lithium is under the intoxicant category and the toxins that you want to dialyze are what? The male, M-A-L-E. The sub-mnemonic of the intoxins needed to be dialyzed out is methanol, aspirin, lithium, and ethylene glycol. What's the antidote for TCA? Sodium bicarbonate. What's cocaine overdose treatment? Benzos. Then observe. You don't give them a beta blocker, though. What about alcohol withdrawal? What do you give them? Benzos. When do delirium tremens start? They happen two to four days after discontinuing alcohol. Delirium tremens, what's the first line of treatment? Benzos. How do you know the difference between alcoholic hallucinations versus delirium tremens? The timing of it. Also, the one thing you want to look for is the blood pressure. So with alcoholic hallucinations, their vitals are pretty stable. But with delirium tremens, they usually have unstable vitals. They'll be hypertensive, tachycardic. So yes, check out the vitals. What about timing of the hallucinosis? Those will usually start 6 to 12 hours. Then the delirium tremens, that's 2 to 4 days after stopping alcohol. So hours versus days. What about a PCP overdose? What's the treatment? Benzos. For the tests, when you don't know what to do with the stimulant, just pick benzo. You cannot go wrong because it's for many of them. How do you diagnose PCP? They're violent, psychotic, and you look in their eyes. They have that look. What will you see? Nystagmus. That's what you'll see in their eyes, nystagmus. Blood tests will show what? Elevated CPK. If you see CPK on lab on a test, what are you going to pick? PCP. And what? Neurologic malignant syndrome. Now, what if someone has a benzo overdose What's the antidote? Flumazenol, but only if they're addicted to benzo. Withdrawn from benzos and you see that they're tachycardic, diaphoretic, hypertensive, and they just look like crap. What do you give them? A benzo. Yeah, I know. It's odd. You give them a benzo because you took them off too quickly. So you give them back benzo and then you're going to taper slowly because you create the problem by discontinuing too suddenly. Treatment of opiate overdose, it's what? Naloxone. Opiate withdrawal is treated with what? Supportive care, because uppers are not fatal. Downers can be fatal in withdrawal. Which downers can take your life? Alcohol and benzodiazepines, because status elepticus and bad seizures, respectively. True or false? Antipsychotics increase mortality in patients with dementia. True. 
If you had to give antipsychotics to the elderly who really are agitated and psychotic and you need to like treat it right away, what are you going to give them? So the two antipsychotics that you can give elderly that are safest are olanzapine and quetanapine. Vascular dementia is a stepwise decline because they keep getting what? Multiple vascular infarcts. What are the risk factors for vascular dementia? Hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and diabetes. What's the mechanism of action for drugs to treat Alzheimer's? Those are cholinesterase inhibitors like denepazil. They inhibit acetylcholine esterase, thereby increasing levels of acetylcholine to improve cognitive function, and MMDA receptors antagonists like memenantine. Those block glutamate activity at the NMDA receptors, protecting neurons from damage and slowing cognitive decline. Old man who's recently having personality changes is inappropriate and has memory deficits. What is it? Frontotemporal dementia or PIC disease. Huntington's disease, what's the mode? Autosomal dominant. They have a cognitive decline with chloria. How do you treat Huntington's disease? Tetrabenzene. What's the disease? A person started, startled with myoclonus, the rapid progression within months. What's that? Startled myoclonus, rapid progression within months. Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease. What will you see on imaging? Spongy form cortex. What will you see on EEG? Sharp wave triphasic complexes. What would you see in an EEG for absence seizures? 3 hertz. True or false? If someone had an MI in the past or a stroke and they're depressed, um, are they more likely to pass, expire? Yes, they're three times more likely to expire. What do you treat restless leg syndrome for in a person laying in bed and they're just very uncomfortable because those legs just won't settle down? What are you going to do? You're going to check that iron level and if it's low, give for sulfate. You can also give gabapentin. Teeth grinding, bruxism. What stage of sleep does it occur? Non-REM, non-rapid eye movement, N-R-E-M. Tourette syndrome. How long do you have to have symptoms for? Over a year, because before that, it's called provisional tic disorder. That's less than a year. But something greater than a year, that gets called Tourette syndrome. So it has to be one year. Tourette's is a combination of motor tics and vocal tics. Whereas if you have a person that only has one, then you'll call it a vocal tic disorder or a motor tic disorder. But Tourette's is both. And that has to be there for at least, what? A year. And you have to have both what? motor and vocal. What's the first line treatment of Tourette's syndrome? Habit reversal therapy. What's the second line? Medication. What medication? Atypical antipsychotic, so second generation. Alpha-2 adrenergic agonists like guafanazine or clonidine. Aneuresis versus acoparesis. At what age do you diagnose each? It's four letters in poop, so it's four years of age, and five letters in urine, so five years of age. Before that, it's just normal development. What's the first line treatment of SIADH? Fluid restriction. In order to diagnose someone with ADHD, at what age of onset did it have to have started at before? Before the age of 12. Somatic symptom disorder presents how? They'll have pain in multiple organ systems. It could be a GI nervousness. It could be musculoskeletal. It could be a long laundry list of things, but... But it's there, and you have to do an extensive workup. And you, if you but if you cannot diagnose it, um, you can't explain it medically. What are you going to do next? They're going to have regular appointments with their doctor. So don't confuse this with general anxiety disorder, which they can also have symptoms of somatic symptom disorder with a lot of multiple bodied complaints. What is illness anxiety disorder and somatic symptom disorder? Somatic symptom disorder, this person is in actual pain, whereas an illness anxiety disorder, they don't have pain, but they're worried all the time about getting a disease. So somatic symptom disorder is unexplained, but they definitely are in pain. For anxiety disorder, they're always just like worried or they just don't know what's going to happen next, but they just think something's going to happen and they just don't want to be in pain. So they're worried about that. What's the treatment? 
is the same for both regular visits with the family doctor. What is fictitious disorder? This is a person that's faking to get attention. How is it different from malingering? This person's faking sick or for personal gain. They're doing it perhaps for wealth. They take time off of work. Um, they have a lawsuit. There's some kind of motive for it. So in fictitious disorder, it's more like it's a psychological thing. They just like people taking care of them. What's bulimia versus anorexia? You know, these things can overlap too, but there's one tiebreaker that ends it with them. And what it is, what's that tiebreaker? The difference is the BMI. In an anorexic person, they have a low BMI, whereas bulimic person, they have a normal BMI. Anorexia is unhealthy caloric deficit. In bulimia, they like binge eating and purging after they eat, or they'll have restrictions, but their BMI is within normal. So that's the difference between that and anorexia. In anorexia, though, there are some medical things you have to know as well. For example, in an anorexic, there's everything is low, bradycardia, low BMI, they're anemic, leukopenia, low electrolytes, so everything's low in the anorexic. When do you admit someone with anorexia to the hospital? When one is has those very unstable vitals, so they're hypotensive, and second is if the electrolyte disturbance is dangerously low, like they have dangerously low potassium, that's when you admit them. What is anorexia associated with? Osteoporosis, stress fractures, amenorrhea. You know, why is that? Because when they have very low BMI, your pituitary gland stops making LH and FSH. So they're also called hypogonotropic, a hypogonism so low that the brain's leading to low estrogen progesterone and the ovaries leading to amenorrhea. And then osteoporosis is caused by low estrogen levels. So low estrogen levels increases the osteoclastic activity. Okay, let's say you in the hospital, you meet an anorexic patient all of a sudden, and you start feeding them. Then all of a sudden, 30 minutes later, they have arrhythmias, respiratory failure, seizures. What's causing this? Refeeding syndrome. What's the deficiency in refeeding syndrome? What's the deficiency in refeeding syndrome? Electrolytes. Which electrolytes specifically? Phosphorus. In refeeding syndrome, you should always be worried about people who are anorexic or even like alcoholics who are malnourished. If you feed them too suddenly, you have a sudden drop in phosphorus, which can cause them to have a seizure. A mechanism for hypophosphatemia is due to all your cells are so hungry for glucose and that they observe the glucose so quickly and they start to enter glycolysis very quickly. And remember, hexokinase, that first enzyme in glycolysis, it adds uh, phosphate to the glucose. So when the hexokinase activity is like an all-time high and all your body's stores of phosphorus are depleted instantly. So that's what refeeding syndrome is. And this is associated with anorexia. So with bulimia, they have the normal BMI and they also have that thing on the back of their hand. What is that? That callus. It's called Russell signs. Then the last thing with the binge eating disorder, what's the one with the BMI that's high? The BMI is greater than 30. So they're obese. Um, this is a person that eats too much till it hurts. And like they'll keep on eating even if they're not hungry. And they're embarrassed about it, but they just can't stop it. And often they'll binge in private. So this is called binge eating disorder. So you have three different BMIs. High, medium, and low anorexia, bulimia, and then binge eating. What's the first line of treatment for obesity? Weight loss, lifestyle modification. What's second line treatment? Medication, like a pancreatic lipase inhibitor. What vitamin deficiencies does it predispose one to? The fat-soluble ones, like the vitamins A, D, E, K. When can you do bariatric surgery? If the BMI is greater than 40 or greater than 35 if the person has a lot of comorbidities. What's the first line treatment for narcolepsy? Modenafil. What's the mechanism of action of modenafil? It's an orexon agonist. So what's orexon? It's a wakefulness hormone. So you try to increase this in the brain or by accident, it's also called hypocretin. When a person with narcolepsy suddenly collapses, what happened? A loss of muscle tone with strong emotion, that's the word called for 
cataplexy, which shouldn't be confused with catalepsy, which is hallucinations when they go into sleep called hypoagogic hallucinations. What is it called when someone has nightmares, but they wake up and they don't remember anything at all, but their whole family saw them like act a little crazy, crazy? Those are called sleep tears or night tears. What stage of sleep does this occur in? Deep sleep, M3. What's a nightmare disorder that they can easily remember all the details of their nightmare? What stage of that sleep will that be occurring in if they can remember it all? REM. What is this associated with? PTSD. If someone has nightmares and PTSD, what's the treatment? Prozosin. What is the mechanism of action of prozosin? It's an alpha-1 antagonist. For What can an alpha-1 antagonist also be used for? For BPH, like tamsulosin. What should you be concerned about when you use an alpha-1 blocker? Orthostatic hypotension. If someone has erectile dysfunction, what side effects should you rule out first? You want to rule out if it's psychological. So you ask, if it's at nighttime when you're sleeping, um, do you get them for no reason, like nocturnal erection, or if it is a psych physiological problem, it's a physiological problem, but they don't get an erection at all at night or like in the morning, then it's a psychological one. What's the most common cause? Atherosclerosis. If they have atherosclerosis causing their erectile dysfunction, what kind of medication should you give? Sildenafil. What's the mechanism of action? It's a PDE5 inhibitor. What's the difference between vaginismus versus vulvodynia? So vaginismus, this is when a person has dyspareunia, pain upon superficial entry of the vagina, which is causing spreading of the vaginal walls. That's causing a lot of the pain. That's called vaginismus. Whereas vulvodynia is, the vulva is very sensitive to touch, and that is causing a lot of pain. What's the treatment? Physical therapy. What's the first-line treatment for fibromyalgia? SNRI. What's the mechanism of action of venlafaxine? It's an SNRI, so it works by blocking the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine, which is a key neurotransmitter in mood regulation. Fibromyalgia, remember, they have the trigger point, and it's associated with stress. Trazodone, remember that, is used as a major depressive patient with insomnia because it makes you sleepy. And yeah, it can also call priaprasmin. What about mirtazapine? Mirtazapine, it is another one that you can use for people that are depressed that but also have a sleeping problem. And also someone that has poor appetite you can do all three, which is great. Please note that trazodone and mirtazapine can be used safely in the elderly. What type of medication should you be careful using when a person has acute angle glaucoma? Anti-muscarinic drugs. So you have to remember that muscarinic drugs cause meiosis, and that helps alleviate the acute angle glaucoma. But if you give an anti-muscarinic, now the pupils will blow up, and that will plug the trabecular meshwork, so that's contraindicated. If someone has taken an antipsychotic, and it works really well, but they're non-compliant with it, what should you do? Try to see if you can switch to a long-acting antipsychotic. What's wernicke kurzkopf syndrome? That's a vitamin B1 deficiency. And when does it come into play? Typically with the alcoholics. How do you treat for that? With intravenous B1 plus glucose, but you give the glucose after you give the vitamin B1, and then you want to give them folate because they can get folate deficiency. How do you diagnose folate deficiency? Macrocytic anemia. The RBCs should be greater than 100. How do you tell the difference between vitamin B9 and a B12 deficiency? You know, they're both megaplastic anemia, so they have neutrophils, they'll, which will be hyperlobules, but the, typically they'll have three to five plus macrocytosis, but there's a blood marker that you can use to measure to tell the difference between B12 and B9. And B12 will have an increase in what? Has increase in methylmalonic acid, but B9 does not. What neurological symptoms does B9 have? Subacute combined degeneration, which affects the dorsal column in the cortical spinal tracts, whereas B9 does not. 
If you found this helpful, you know, hit that like button. Let me know as well if you'd like me to do other topics like this versus the traditional multiple choice question videos.